I see a Courtney head. Oh, hi. We got a bit of echo. It was me. Oh, there she is. I think Courtney's got a bit of echo. Can you, do you have headphones, Courtney? I don't know. That, How do I, I stop my you. echo? Oh, wait a minute. Turn on a light, Courtney. Richard. All right, so Courtney is joining us from uh, just after your brother's wedding, I take it? Yeah. Awesome. Actually. Uh, Richard is joining us from Charlottesville, so we just had a couple of other Charlottesvillians in here. Richard, you're on these astronomy bombs, so there we go. And Michael is trying to join us. Um, maybe, Courtney, can you turn down the volume to reduce the echo? That, that might help. No, see, I'm hearing my own audio come back through, through your side. My first time using this microphone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you put headphones on, that'll... Um... I'm wearing headphones. Okay. Uh -huh. There's still sound coming out of your computer somewhere. This is my first time using this mic, so okay. let's give it a shot. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm still hearing the echo through. You but can um... Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so the... Oh, gosh, I, I can't. Ah, I'm getting distracted by the echo. <laughs> hi, everybody. No, it's, it's, it's on her. Hi, hi, hi. Every, 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 every. Buddy, 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 buddy. Okay, now you're just playing. Now you're just, now you're just messing with me. Yeah, hang on. Yeah. You got me. Okay, so we uh, have a discussion topic about how to battle cranks. And I... <laughs> Um, so what's wrong with cranks? Cranks. Oh, cranks. Okay. No, we love cranks. Okay. We're okay with that. Okay, you just... have bad hearing. <laughs> You're serious. young. Give me a break. You shouldn't have bad hearing yet. Um, what would you... First of all, I guess, what the, what's the definition of a crank? What would you consider a crank? Richard's too busy playing with a master. <laughs> Yeah, he's got rocks. Michael, there you are. Hello. Are you? Now I'm hearing the YouTube feed from 70 seconds ago. You were brilliant 70 seconds ago. <laughs> Truly. <clears throat> so what would you consider a crank? Who, me? The, uh, Anyone, go. How, how about somebody who is uh, so wildly, I, I'm, I'm quoting now, so wildly at variance with those in those commonly held beliefs as to be considered to be ludicrous. I just like the word ludicrous. So. Ludicrous. That'll so work. so ludicrous beyond uh, what is, is acceptable in, in some way. Dismissing all evidence. Dismissing evidence. Okay, that, Facts, that's a good you know, Facts, I, I consider facts to be irritating because they get under your skin and they itch terribly. <laughs> oh. Right, so so we're, we're saying that crank isn't, you know, a lot of people like to argue on the internet, but we don't want to just talk about, hey, you disagree with me, uh, I disagree with me, you, um, but uh, somebody that is, is dismissing evidence, right? And so where do, where do you run into these kinds of things? Well, it seems like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to run into them in the classroom. Oh, okay. They're a little harder to dismiss, dismiss when they're in the classroom because they actually, mm -hmm. you know, paid to be there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean the teachers, not the students? Well, uh, both. Okay. <laughs> That's always fun. No, I, I lecture, but I also uh, teach teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. at the local college, uh, the university, yeah, Oakland where, University. Where are you located, Michael? So Michael's been running a lot of our green room stuff. Uh, you are behind Astronomy FM. Uh, maybe a little introduction is in order. Ah, oh, well, of course. Uh, I am a planetary astronomer. I work on processing data, uh, data mission data, Kepler mission data. See, it's, it's been a long night for me, too. <laughs> Kepler mission data or data mission Kepler, one or the other. Um, that is uh, what I do for a living. And then for fun, because, you know, free time, what's that? Uh, I'm the program director of astronomy.fm, which is an all-astronomy general science internet radio station. And uh, so we're hoping with this right here tonight, we're simulcasting tonight's broadcast for those people who, who don't have the pleasure of uh, Google Plus and YouTube. They're 
quite a few countries around the world where you can't watch what we're doing right now. Uh, interestingly, um, we, we're getting a, a large number of our broadcast listeners are in China. Oh, hello, China. China. Yeah, China, we are usually uh, uh, blocked, censored by the government. Yeah. So, and I just screwed it up by just mentioning that fact live yeah. on the air. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but where I'm located, I'm in uh, Metro Detroit. Um, <coughs> and, uh, I'm associated with Caltech, <coughs> and I work in the Canary Islands. So other than that, I'm really not quite sure where I'm at. <laughs> you're, you're all over the Internet. That's I'm all everywhere. over the place, yeah. The Internet, one giant location. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, and Richard, we, we, we've had you uh, in and out and through and doing video stuff, but uh, why don't you actually introduce yourself, where you are and what you do? Uh, yes, hello. I'm uh, uh, Richard Drum in Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, the past president of the Charlottesville Astronomical Society and Hi. current vice president of it. Oh, yeah, right. There, there, I, I there you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I have several, I have several cast mugs. Nice chapeau. <laughs> and uh, uh, I've uh, uh, been doing presentations at McCormick Observatory, the, the uh, uh, home of uh, DSBK and, and Nicole's old stomping grounds. And uh, yeah, I've uh, I, I've done presentations there, usually for th things like Friday night. It was uh, Girl Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, even the Senior Center. But here, here's uh, I get to actually out myself a little bit uh, uh, tonight. I, uh, I did a presentation for at, at McCormick for a group of astrologers about three years ago. Ooh. Yes, actual astrologers. Yeah. Now my my typical presentation starts off with the low hanging fruit uh, attacking astrology. Oh boy! So I had to make a decision: uh, Am I going to lose my audience at the very start, or do I want to? kind of wedge my way in a little bit and so I kind of I actually took that uh, attack out um, and okay. sort sense. of worked science in as best I could I mean uh, astrology like a lot of woo is a position that one arrives at um, not by using rationality and so you can't really use rationality to talk them out of that position so I kind of tried to ex you know ex expose them to some science um, and I did the best I could. I don't think I, any of them left not being astrologers still. They're quite convinced that it works. I also have, when I worked at Channel 29, the local uh, uh, NBC affiliate here in Charlottesville, I uh, had a friend that, that also that worked as another cameraman uh, next to me, and uh, he and uh, his housemates, they were 100% into drawing up star charts and doing and They kept offering to me to, uh, to do my chart. As oh if boy. that would be, yeah, as if that would be uh, uh, indicative of something, and I always politely declined. It is. And it's indicative of your suckerhood. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I, and, and I got into it a little bit with him. I was you know, on Facebook. I, uh, I had friended him again after years, and um, you know, without keeping him in mind, I was saying, oh, the astrology, what a, what a crock, and uh, he came back and said, no, it's not a crock, it works for me, I don't know how, but it really works well for me and my clients, and I was like, oh, clients. well, you know, and, and, what you gonna and do? you've actually got research backing you up there, and uh, oh, again, yeah. the tie into University of Virginia, some of the professors at the University of Virginia did some uh, work going through horoscopes and going through... Uh, Mm -hmm. um, different star charts and things like that that um, actually showed. Oh, hang on, I need to. Ah, I'm still getting echo. Um, that actually showed um, uh, that the astrology doesn't work, and so there's that research going uh -oh. in there. Hang you on. muted Courtney, but it's still echoing. Uh, is it still echoing? Okay. <laughs> I've got um, headphones on. Yeah. Can you hear me? Um, Courtney, when you're not talking, we have to keep you muted because of the echo. But it's, but you but it's to, still oh, you echoing. When you say something. But it's still can echoing. Can you hear me? Is this working? We can hear you now. Hello. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now, but when you're not talking, we need you to mute yourself because of the echo. What's echoing? I, don't, I turned off everything else. Okay, but we, hear, we, we can hear the echo coming through your side. I can see the sound bar. Yeah. I had a second window out open for a while um, that was causing echo, I think, earlier on. Okay. Yeah. I did the same, and I turned it off, so I'm, I don't know okay. why I'm still listening. Maybe that was where it was coming from. Yeah. Um, My head is hollow. 
So there's a lot in there. Not much I can do about that. A lot of cotton wrapping around my head. That's why I don't have a picture, uh, a live image of myself. I, I have a face for radio. <laughs> Hey man, I've been sitting here for I don't know how many hours of lost track. I you know I can't look that great. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's there's uh you know you can actually do the research and and see if the if the astrology is actually making any sense or making a difference. And uh, they, they've done this research decades ago that showed that uh, there doesn't seem to be anything behind it. I, I think it's making a difference because they believe it. You know, and that's that's enough for them, and it's kind of making it happen in their own heads. You know. Yes. I can't hear you that well. Ugh. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> You know, when you mentioned that it works well for my clients, quote unquote, my first question is how well, uh, how 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 deeply does that person hold that belief personally? Very. Or is it a, well? Is it a question of yes, I believe this stuff, or boy, I found a really good scam I can make a lot of money doing? And what's also interesting is when people make that transition from mm. they, they started out as as true believers. Over time, they find that uh, you know <laughs> the stuff I've been talking about is really woo, and yet they uh, say, "Well, this this is me. This is this is my shtick. I guess I have mm. to stick with it." That's probably only Sylvia Brown that's that's that that uh, cynical. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's not even astrology. That's that's now we're we're oh, yeah. full on into cold talking reading. With the dead. Yeah, cold reading basically. Uh, yep. If you ever want to see a great cold reading demonstration, go see Penn and Teller. Um, they are <laughs> magicians, and they come out and say, "We're here to fool you." Uh, and they do some pretty cool uh, cold reading demonstrations. They pick people out of the audience and <laughs> read what's on their mind. You saw yeah. that South Park too. <laughs> South Park is is nice at taking down different different forms of crankery. I would love to have uh, uh, pulled James Randi's trick on the astrologers and and had underneath each chair uh, stuck a little uh, uh, a little prediction for each yeah. person. You know, and how, this is the thing that he had done uh, a, a number of years ago, and uh, had, had uh, each person pull it out and just read their own, and then uh, everyone hold up your hands if it's if it really applies to you and if it's really accurate, and they all you know, like ninety percent of them hold it up, hold their hand up. Now hand it to the person to your left and the person all the way, bring it to the right. And of course, they're all exactly identical. You know, yeah. sometimes you're outgoing, sometimes you're res reserved. You know, and, you know, everybody's that way. Yeah. Oh well. And from uh, if you tie back into the astronomy, um, if you a lot of the uh, not all of astrology, I will get corrected on that if I say otherwise, but a lot of astrology, uh, Western astrology, is based on the zodiac constellations, and they're not right. in the same place they were five thousand years ago. Uh, yep. And so the sign you think you are, probably not the sign you think you are. And then some of you are Ophiuchus, and so good luck finding that in the newspaper <laughs> as well. Uh, I used to have fun irritating Pamela. I'd just walk in the room and say, so I'm a Gemini, Pamela. What's my horoscope? <laughs> you, you, did, you did admit earlier, I don't know any astronomy. <laughs> uh, if you missed that earlier, Joe is, is one of our pro Joe is one of our programmers on Cosmo Quest, and so this uh, this this fundraiser is is in large part to feed Joe because he's hungry and a poor grad student, and we're poor losing Joe. the funding that support the program. <laughs> poor Looks Joe. like he's drinking Joe too. Yes. Yep. Yes. What What are you drinking right uh, now? Cider and nothing else. Cider and ah. nothing else. Is this Santa Claus yeah. on the mug? Okay, there's Santa Claus on the mug, but that's fine. <laughs> hey, Nicole. Can Yay! You, can you hear me now? And am I not echoing? I think I fixed it. Uh, let me say something. Yeah, you're not echoing anymore, and we can hear you a little Yay. better. So. Yay! Yeah. Hi! How a, are a you? Different, a different microphone, perhaps? Um. No, I realized that I have this speakers and the microphone doing the same thing. Gotcha. <laughs> Head, head, headphones <laughs> and speakers simultaneously. Yeah, there you go. So oh, so Courtney, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us where everyone. you are? <laughs> I am in um, Katy, Texas. It's the suburb of Houston for my brother's wedding. I was in it. Very nice. They went off on their honeymoon on a cruise, and I cleaned everything up after that. So I'm here now. Yay. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry I had to miss today. I hope it's gone well so far. Yeah, and we actually got to see some of your craft videos. Uh, oh, really? How did that go? We did started... Not bad. 
Yeah, we started the one with the t-shirts. We haven't. Sh- we actually need to keep showing segments from that. I don't think we've shown segments in a while. Oh, the shirt yeah, it's, it's a little tricky getting the audio to feed through, but I edited, edited them this morning slash yesterday morning slash last night slash <laughs> yeah, Friday, yeah. Friday morning early, like 4 or 5 a.m. I was editing your, your video clips. Yeah, so nice. we'll, need to pick, we'll need to pick that video up and continue to see how to make that really cool shirt. Oh, that yeah, we have. I, yep. did an, I did an Astro Gear commercial as well. Did you get right, that right. one, Richard? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that yep. the one we you showed that. already? Nice. We've shown that plus part of the uh, T-shirt making ones. Yeah, I really like the little planetary nebula in there. That came out well. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, I spent a really long time painting those shirts, actually. It, it wasn't a I, – I went to Pamela's house four days in a row working yep. for hours each day. <laughs> it was not a simple process. And then there were storms, and it got dark, and just yep. – And air – Stopping, you know. And air, aircraft, and a heat pump that turned oh, on and off, oh, and a neighbor, a neighbor or a somebody neighbor came by. On and stopping and saying hello, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, yeah, they no, wait, knew I was recording. They walked by and watched me like setting up all these camera and audio things, and they just started talking to me in the middle of it. Okay. Were you just saying that it was, you were recording while it was a dark and stormy night? Did I, did I hear that? Um, I had to keep mm. doing different nights because I, I, you know, the storm hit me the first night, and I had to pack everything up and take it inside. Then I came back the next night and it got dark and I couldn't see what I was doing at all. So I just <laughs> tag it up and come back the next day. It took me four days of going back over there to to redo video, video created by everything up. Yeah. So I'm wearing four different outfits essentially in those videos. <laughs> it's very interesting. Continuity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I thought about wearing the same shirt the whole time, but I was like, man, it was hot and sweaty and gross, yeah. and I was like, no, um, you'll just enjoy. <laughs> but yeah, um, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Courtney Hogan. I'm a. Uh, I work with all of these awesome people you've been hanging out with all day. Uh, I am also in Cosmo Quest Forum. I guess liaison from all the mm. admins and moderators to the, yeah. you know, these all this whole team has been hanging out with all day. Yeah. So. so have you had to deal with any cranks yet b- besides me? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that the moderators have never gotten cranky, but I've gotten cranky too. So <laughs> that's a different kind of crank. <laughs> yeah, we're we're loving that, but it's I I haven't had to do that at least not yet. They they <laughs> seem to have it under control, which yeah. I love. So I'm trying to keep them happy as best possible. Which, by <laughs> the way, Nicole, there's a whole bag in that attic of bracelets. Don't feed the trolls. Oh, okay. uh, anyone who joins the Cosmo Quest forum becomes a member during this whole event is going to get a free "Don't be, <laughs> Don't Feed the Trolls" bracelet. So you gotta go grab some of those. They're different colors. They're three different colors, <laughs> and show okay. people what they look like. When All right, I'll that. have to find out more about that when Pamela wakes up from her nap. I don't know where any of those are. Uh, I've got a couple of those bracelets myself. I, I can tell you where they are. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little worried here. Here's some advice at uh, the wee hours of the morning to go into the attic on the stormy night. They're in the attic right oh, now. They're in the attic Uh-huh, already. uh-huh. They're already there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, in that case, it's what a it's fine-looking never, attic Pamela has. It's a, it's a, it's a floor it's all a, to itself. It's a fabulous attic. Yeah. Next yeah. is a widow's walk with a big telescope on top. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I'm pretty excited about that. Don't let Kyle hear you say widow's walk. I just, you know, it's just saying. He knows about it. He's not, <laughs> okay. Well, see, in order for her to be a widow, it's oh, never mind. No, it's just what they call it. <laughs> oh, I see. It's a term of art, yes. Term of, of design, maybe. So the uh, the forums, uh, we, we uh, merged in with the Bad Astronomy Universe Today forums, which uh, 
was uh, started uh, by Bad Astronomy and Universe Today, Fra uh, Phil Plate and Fraser Kane, and, and something that Phil does on his blog is battle mis misinformation uh, and cranks. Uh, he started with the Bad Astronomy website when he was a grad student at University of Virginia. <laughs> uh, you know, but there was no DSPK. He had to amuse himself somehow. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and uh, these forums started in, in part to battle misinformation on the internet. And so we still get a lot of Google searches on basic astronomy terms and basic uh, crank <laughs> woo terms um, <laughs> that, that take you right to uh, right to the forums. And so that's something to, um, if you want to find out information about, you know, things in science and skepticism, uh, that's what we have going on there. Uh, Joshua Warner. Is commenting uh, that getting real information out is so so important. A friend of her, a uh, friend of his, has uh, had a new baby, and somebody <laughs> was telling her not to vaccinate and to feed her baby raw eggs. Um, there was a lot of misinformation. Of course, if you just oh there, of course if you just um, Google this stuff, you're going to get all kinds of answers. You may not necessarily get the uh, scientific answers first off. Yeah. You have to you control? search the right way to get the to get the scientific answers. Yeah, not everybody knows how to do that, you know. Yeah, yep. and uh, so that's something uh, again at at Bad Astronomy that's come up a lot is is the vaccination, um, and this is not an astronomy yeah. topic at all, but it's a scientific topic, and thing, <clears throat> something that's been studied well well and truly through. Um, yeah, there, there was a scare in the in the late nineties of whether. The um, the vaccines that we were giving babies were causing autism, and so uh, scares the right word. Yeah, it's turned out yeah. that of course Andrew Wakefield uh, fabricated data. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whoops. Lied. Um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe uh, can can you guys talk on that? Have you ever run into to uh, non astronomy uh, misinformation like that that you've had to battle? And, yeah. and maybe uh, as a non expert, right? Because you know if astronomy is your thing, uh, vaccinations is not your thing. How can you uh, navigate the information as a non expert? Vaccinations would be more my thing than astronomy, to be honest with you. But um, I'd say that there's always going to be people on both sides. You know, once some extreme, some far left, far right, whatever you want to call it. That's political terminology. The same thing applies. Uh oh, you know? she froze. Oh, I did. No, I hear. Looks fine. <laughs> Looks fine here. Um, I'd say that vaccinations, people are, there's always going to be risk to the medical technologies and advancements that we have, but for vaccinations, the benefits far outweigh any of the risks you're going to see. So, now, in all fairness, that's, a that's a perfectly rational point of view, unless it's your child who's one of the million who is indeed right. truly hurt yeah, by a vaccine. You're right, and that's going to change anything. Yeah, and that's where emotion weighs in um, mm -hmm. ahead of facts because we're all humans, and that's uh, the kind of things our, our brains work on and feed on. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, how how do you so how do you know what information to trust when you're, when you're looking at this? Well, I, I ran into something uh, not too long ago. It was uh, I was over on Facebook, and uh, uh, they were talking about vaccination and a, a wide variety of topics. And, and oh, as, that's right. It was uh, on uh, on the. Uh, uh, um, um, on on the Facebook page for uh, uh, Pamela, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it was a, a fellow in India who had not very strong English skills, and he was uh, uh, basically trying to convince everyone uh, about his whole idea that plate tectonics was wrong, and that it was all what was it? Um, uh, uh, had something to do with uh, geometry, basically. Is the, the geometry of the entire universe was all reflected in the geometry of the Earth and the geometry of the planets and everything. Uh, oh, I think know, I've run into that guy. Yeah, uh, and uh, so I went to Google. Uh, he he had put up a, a link to a, a, his his one or his scientific papers, and uh, uh, so I went to Google and typed in "crap journal" into the into there and Crap? found. Crap journal because I mean it was written in a, in a, this paper he had written okay. was in a journal somewhere and uh, as some of us may know there are journals out there that will print anything 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I went, okay, is this is this a valid journal or is this a crap journal? So I went into Google and typed crap journal and uh, found SkepticNet or something like that down there that said how to determine whether a journal is crap or not. I clicked on that and there was a link in there to a list of crack, crap journals and uh, there was his journal right there. And then and there's hundreds of them, and they sound really important too. You know, Institute of Natural Sciences Worldwide. You know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Who knows? You know, but uh, yeah, it was, and it was a crap journal. Basically, you pay a fee of a hundred dollars or a hundred rupees or whatever, and they'll print your thing all, not not using any actual ink or paper, but they'll put it on the web. And uh, so I had to explain to the guy, yeah, you're 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 quote published unquote, but you're published in a disreputable journal. Do some real science, get published in the AJ, the Astrophysical Journal, or Nature, and uh, get back to me. And yeah, probably it hasn't been peer reviewed by other people. Yeah. <clears throat> or the peers are people like Andrew Weil, who who's oh, yeah. you know peerless. <laughs> in the way. Well, you know, since Google is helping us host this whole event, I'm gonna maybe throw out a little shot for Google Scholar on that mm. front. I think they're pretty good at screening all the journals and the for the most part from what I found, at least in the sciences I've researched, that astronomy is not one of the sciences I research often. Nicole is the expert there. So um, yeah, astronomy yeah. is lucky in that we have uh, something called the Astrophysical Data Service, NASA ADS. They actually uh, collate all the astronomy mm-hmm. journal papers for us. Uh, we don't even have to go with something as wide as Google Scholar, but I found uh, in, in doing more of the sociological research in order to uh, look at things like citizen science motivations, I've had to go to Google Scholar uh, to go outside my comfortable field of astronomy. Um, and that's where you can, um, they, they do a good job of indexing the reputable journals there. Yeah, the yep. expand on that point, you asked this question a little bit earlier, Nicole, and that was, you know, why why and how, as uh, astronomers or whatever your particular field of study is, if you're if you are a working scientist, how can you become knowledgeable? Why should you even care about what's happening in other sciences that are completely unrelated? For example, the example that we've been talking about is uh, vaccines when we're a, a, a group of astronomers. And one of my favorite quotes to illustrate that need for us to to defend science as as a philosophy mm-hmm. is from Isaac Asimov. There is a single light ah. of science. And to brighten it anywhere is to brighten it everywhere. When there is an attack on science in any part, then it is attack, an attack on all of science. When a member of uh, the United States Senate stands up and a position of great power and influence and says that climate science is the greatest hoax ever perpetuated upon the American people, yeah, which is my definition of a crank, Mm-hmm. Sure it is, right. All these scientists are just making this up. Thousands of scientists around the world making this up. Uh, but the oil companies, clever, they're guys. correct. Yeah. <laughs> we have to stand up as, as working scientists say, no, this, this is what the science says. Yeah. Every science organization, every uh, national foundation in the world has, has agreed that there is a, a great likelihood because, yeah, sorry, wishy-washy science language here, there's no perfect <laughs> answer. We don't have the exact answer, but you know, we're scared by it. We're scared by what we're finding. Yeah. In fact, that, yeah. that's a direct quote I got from an interview I did with somebody uh, at the uh, National Snow and Data, uh, Ice Data Center in Boulder. Um, that he, He's studying the Arctic ice levels and saying, man, this is freaking us out. Literally freaking us out. And as a, as a working scientist, I've got to take that into account. Um, mm. We don't see people arguing with doctors that, you know, smoking is bad. You know, if you want to make that choice, it's fine. But don't pretend that it's a healthy, wonderful choice. Yeah. Although um, they did that back in the fifties, they 50s. did. Yeah. They yeah. did. They but did try that. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, with <laughs> climate well. science, the data really is there for everyone to see, and <clears throat> I've seen citizen science projects doing climate science as well. So the data is not just there for you know working scientists, you know, in in institutions to see, but you know everyday people, uh, people who are not climate scientists like me can can go in and do these citizen science projects and and also contribute to that data collection that shows yes there's a major thing happening here uh, mm-hmm. there, there's no way to hide <laughs> there's nowhere to hide for, for uh, <laughs> the global temperature changes <laughs> well one good weapon that we can all use I think is comedy 
it's hard to do comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, but look at Colbert and and uh, uh, Stewart to some extent, uh, and, and you'll see uh, you know what, one good way to to get people's attention. What I do in my presentations at McCormick, I'll hold up my iPad here. I hope this can show up. Oh, here we I go. A little bit. Yeah, um, this is a flow chart. Uh, that I use. This is part of my presentation, and uh, we uh, let's see if I can do this backwards. Here we go. We start up here, and we uh, get an idea, and then we uh, perform an experiment, and we look at the uh, ex results of the experiment and see whether they agree with our, our idea or not. Uh, and if they do, then we go back. If they don't, then we go back up and get a new idea. But if they do, we improve our theory and use it to better understand the universe. Then, rather than quit while we're uh, ahead, uh, we discover new evidence and etc. So it's a, it's a little flow chart that shows all the the feedback mechanisms uh, for. Uh, there is um, Richard. There is a major item lacking from that flow chart. Well, oh, so I, that, I, I, but I, I, follow, I follow that. I follow that flow chart with the astrology side, and it's a lot simpler. <laughs> you have an idea. You ignore consciousness. Oh, it always gets the laugh out of everybody. From the it froze up, but I think but you said what, ignore what, contradicting. What's missing? What's missing is we right, go right, back dude. to the astronomy yeah, flowchart. Caffeine. 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 Lots of caffeine. Lots of caffeine. <laughs> oh and man. Pizza. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be the catalyst star on the side. Right the yeah. caffeine. None <laughs> of it, it goes. Accelerates that. the process. <laughs> mm, that's awesome. Um, I, you know, in response to the questions you were asking earlier, um, Michael, I believe I'm not. I haven't seen the face. I, your Sky Radio, Michael. Yep. Sky Guide Radio, Michael. I have no face. I am faceless. Well, you have a silhouette of a face with glasses and a beard. Is it good? Anyway, um, in answer to your question, I think all scientists are always going to overlap. So yes, there's always a consideration for what's happening in your other sciences. You know, like a virus is going to be one of the most likely things to be living on another planet, in my opinion. It's, it lives in so many environments. Um, so I, you're always going to have those overlaps. Climate science is always going to be important for astronomy and biology and all these other sciences so but that's another everything needs to be in moderation there's no one thing that's causing all of this to happen everything's working together so yeah we all need to collaborate with our I other blame scientists Canada. I blame the Canadians. Canada. Yeah, we need absolutely. to collaborate with them too. You know, we have Fraser. Where's Fraser? <laughs> we have Kyle. Yeah. Kyle's not in the room. It's okay. No, we don't have any fun of Canada with us right now. Apparently, <laughs> Canadians. Oh. Anyone chiming in? <laughs> well, they have the cure for global warming. All that cold air. Legit. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. Oh, so uh, we've been getting some really good comments. Um, the Life Genesis uh, ah. YouTube uh, just had a daughter. Congratulations. And they are trying to make these decisions. And I'm sure you are washing all different types of good information, bad information, middling information, irrelevant information. Uh, it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, and so um, me personally, I, I tend to go with things that, you know, the Center for Disease Control. I, as a scientist, I do see how things work within science and uh, I see it's hard to hide, uh, you know, data. So when, when someone's telling you the scientists are hiding things, eh, you know, we're really bad yeah. at that. <laughs> we're really bad at that. We have yeah, big and One thing that uh, Randy has proved, James Randy has proved with Project Alpha is that often the scientists are the ones who are easiest to fool. Uh, and one needs only look at Ma'am Bialik and her complete re refusal to believe what her M, her own MD her own yeah. pediatrician tells her about her own kids she doesn't uh, she doesn't vaccinate her kids and she's got a PhD in microbiology of all the people she should be the one who knows that viruses are dangerous but no no she's been, she's studied stuff and she knows better uh oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I hope her kids don't die but if they do yeah you know maybe she'll learn something uh, but the uh, the experiment will. with James Randi was uh, uh, I think it was a couple of psychologists uh, they were able to trick yep. 
um, them into thinking that a couple of young magicians uh, had psychic powers. And uh, scientists, in a lot of ways, don't think that, you know, I mean, especially if you're studying people, they don't think you're going to lie. <laughs> they're, they're not waiting to be deceived. They're just looking to, to observe and, and collect data. And so, yeah, we can be the easiest to fool if uh, we're thinking strictly along those lines. Now, um, I'm, I'm a scientist and I have great psychotic powers. <laughs> I think that's a necessity. Um, yeah. <laughs> but beyond the, I mean, some of these things are, are kind of life and death decisions. And then some of these things are just really out there. Somebody said time cube. Uh, we're just going to leave that. Time, if you've never seen the Time Cube website, um, it's 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 a woof, it's bright. Um, and then uh, Steve DeGroof has joined us in the comment hey, thread. Hey, Three um, Lobsters. Mentioned, yeah, Three Lobsters mentioning, uh, we mentioned comedy as being a good way to get across these these concepts. Uh, they do so with comedy and puppets, which we'll be seeing later t uh, this morning. I'm really excited with Death by Puppets coming. Um, and uh, I pointed out there is there is this one gentleman that at uh, Dragon Con every year that comes up to every astronomy person uh, who speaks. Uh, we've we've been approached by him before, uh, and uh, uses uh, trigonometry to prove that spaceflight is impossible. Uh, oh, and, I've talked to that guy. You have I okay. I have talked to him. I, you may have been deflected. He may it's have been deflected intense. towards you. I'll say it's intense. That's it, all it, I'm it, going with. It's interesting because, you know, it's not a life and death thing, but it's something that someone is fixated on in a way. And, and I don't... What does he say? He proves that space flight <laughs> is impossible because of his math. Okay. And, you know, and, and as, as, as an astronomer... He tries to show you the whole thing. Oh, yeah, he he'll sit there and write it. it out for you. Yeah. What's an audience? In front of you, you know, and... But I, I get emails. I've I've even had you know books mailed to me of of alternative theories of the universe um, from you know and and it's 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 just interesting to see what people fixate on, um, and and are determined to go against the mainstream on. And I totally go get you know going against the mainstream on so many things. I mean I have like pink hair here, um, but uh, it's to see what what uh, different people fixate on. Yeah, your hair's not pink, Richard. Sorry. <laughs> It is, so is gray is the best I can do. Fascinating. What, what we obviously need, Nicole, is a trigonometric approach to show that that gentleman doesn't exist. <laughs> when when he approaches, you say you're not real, and let me show you why you're not real. Yeah, I don't know if I have the. That would be a, the, probably the best comeback you could give him to, yeah. to get him off his off circle. his uh, routine. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of routine, the reason that we're here tonight is this is the CosmoQuest 24-hour, much longer than 24-hour uh, hangout-a-thon, and that's because we're here to raise money for CosmoQuest. Uh, speaking from my perspective, not as a, a member of the CosmoQuest team, but as a person who appreciates the work you do because of the programs that you produce for that we air on astronomy.fm, 365 Days of Astronomy, uh, Astronomy Cast, uh, Learning Space, which, uh, Nicole, we love having on... Uh, on astronomy.fm, especially with our uh, our outreach and uh, teacher education aspect. Thank you. I'm glad uh, to hear the, that. The weekly space hangouts and uh, um, and so on and so on and so on. And that's just a small part of what CosmoQuest does. Uh, bottom line is that uh, Congress. I'm I'm sorry. Let me say this: the proper enunciation. Congress, Congress, because to my mind, Congress is a four-letter word. Uh, oh. Congress, <laughs> in its infinite wisdom, has decided that education and outreach is no longer the priority that, uh, well, that frankly, as it should be. And this, the funding has been slashed across this country enormously. And what CosmoQuest is, uh, speaking as a fan now, what CosmoQuest is trying to do is fill that gap in some small but effective way. So I am right now taking a moment from this discussion to beg, to plea with the people who are listening to this program to jump online, go to CosmoQuest.org and hit donate. In fact, can we throw that address back in the bottom of the screen do we or do yep. I have to shut up for that to show oh, no, up I can, I can, you can keep talking I can point there we go there it is there's their URL if you're uh, following us along on Google Plus or in, on YouTube if you're listening on the simulcast on astronomy.fm because we're we're carrying uh, all of almost all of this programming on, on astronomy.fm join us and uh, make your donation to help support with the work that uh, that Nicole and Pamela and Dozens of other people hit CosmoQuest, and hundreds of people around the world do. It's a very modest request, and if everyone who is listening gave a little bit, we'd, we'd, we'd meet the goal. Um, and we need your support to do that. So enough of the ad. Come on, people. Give it the program. 
Thank you, Michael. Yes, you've been keeping us on track with doing our donation begging. So cosmoquest.org slash donate. Uh, we'll take you to the page where there's a PayPal link. And uh, we want to keep Joe fed and, and let him go to the doctor. Because <laughs> apparently he just told us he hasn't been to the doctor in several years. Cause he needs an operation. <laughs> So, well, uh, I, yeah. I will say one other way you can help support us is to help support all of our media costs through Astro Gear. You can go buy a t shirt or a bumper sticker or something. Uh, is that astrogear.com or? Astrogear.com or .org. We have both. Um, they both go to the same place. I'm, I'm checking that out right now. That's I, I... a way to help support media costs, and you get something from it in return. Yeah. And you can get Cosmo Quest shirts and lanyards there. As well. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do the Astro Gear ad while we're on to the ad stuff. Okay. <laughs> do we have anything at astrogear.com in flaming pink? You know, to match the <laughs> um, Not at this time, but okay. go ahead and send a request. That's a request, that. okay. We have and had some I troubles will... with the store tonight. Uh, a lot of the orders are coming back, um, so I think we have to fix the code on that. So, but keep that so link bookmarked. Send, send an email, and we can we can handle those. Okay. Squee, we got Surly Ramix. We will we will get you your merchandise. Yes, yes. If send you want email. it. Uh, which which email address? Info at Astrosphere. Uh, yeah, that one. That one was yes. Astros Info at Astrosphere.org. Astrosphere yes, that one would be org, not com. Yeah, so go ahead and do that as well. You get swag. You get, uh, yeah, um, yeah. You mentioned Surly, Surly Amy. Uh, I don't know if we have any of her stuff in the store right now, but uh, she has uh, offered tonight. Um, if you go to Surly, hmm? her, did we sell out of her? We had. I, I I don't know, but uh, in her store at SurlyRamics.com, mm -hmm. uh, that'll take you to her Etsy shop. If you put Cosmo Quest in the notes to seller, she will donate uh, some percentage of the proceeds to Cosmo Quest, not just tonight, but from here on into the future. Uh, so Surly Amy has uh, pledged to do that because uh, she's awesome sauce like that. So yeah, and I think we do have some of the moon ones, uh, special edition moon ones in our store as well. So you can and maybe in. the VLA. Oh, I know. I was so excited about this, right? <laughs> I can't believe we didn't talk about this during her segment. Um, she did um, with uh, Tanya Burchell in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, they uh, designed one for the very large array, so the Y-shaped array of antennas out in New Mexico. And it looks like the VLA, and uh, they're selling it in the VLA gift shop now in New Mexico. We managed to make that connection as well. So that's really exciting. Uh, it's too bad we don't have Tanya on tonight. I know. Oh, well. You know, she's been sick, so, you know, I don't uh. <laughs> don't want to bug her too much. Um, so, so yeah. So those are all ways. So uh, if you don't want to donate right out, uh, you can you can uh, buy things from from Surly Amy. You can buy things from the Astro Gear store that helps keep the media stuff going. Um, so all of those things are are ways to help out financially. I like the cosmology T-shirt. I'm I, I'm sorry. I've I've stopped being a guest on your show. I'm now a shopper no, with a microphone. Okay, you shopper. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. Cosmology gets better with age. The cheesy moon T-shirt. Oh yeah, there go. it is. Oh, that's lovely. Richard, come on, P oh. put, put that down, man. The women are swooning. <laughs> oh, God. That that manly chest is more than that camera can handle. <laughs> So I, you know, I know that we have a few 365 Surly Ramix, 365 Days of Astronomy, and Astronomy Cast available for you, you, right now. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So, enjoy. Are you enjoying yourself over there, Guy Guy Michael? Yes, I'm. I'm now looking at the T-shirt that shows Astronomy Cast is the center of the universe. I, I've always wondered about that. <laughs> I have that one actually. I own I one of the very limited edition women's size astronomy cat t-shirts. Let me tell I would you have it's to get perfect, to... perfect fit for a woman right there. It's very intense. But I have to get Fraser only Pamela and, uh, Pamela. and I have that. There's only two in existence. Oh, very limited as if they came they came out <laughs> from the t shirt lady shop. Well here's here's the deal though. If we get enough requests for it. I will order them. We can do a yeah. t-shirt campaign. T-shirt campaign. <laughs> the, the, you want the, that t-shirt in women's 
send me at least 25 requests for it, and I will order them all for you. Yeah. <laughs> Lady occasionally gives us samples, and that's how we end up with special limited edition women shirts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, Nicole, I see that the next segment is uh, called Astrophotography 2, Sunrise. And looking out my window, I can see that it's beginning to be sunrise here in Virginia. I I'm can glad see light you're getting there. sunrise. We still, we probably still have storm clouds over us, so I don't think that's happening. We're, we're totally going to have to wing the next segment. Oh. <laughs> oh, was the plan to have a camera actually look at sunrise there? That was Pamela's plan, but uh, we've had storms all night, and so I don't think we've got that. I might, uh, I might be able to look at sunrise. I mean, are you portable? It's not stormy. Can you point the webcam out the window? That's close I, enough. I can, yeah. I can do that. I can <laughs> even drive somewhere if you really want me to. Here I can point the... my microphone at the sunrise. <laughs> let me, well, you let know, me if it was hooked up to a radio off. telescope, <laughs> we could um, do that. My camera's locked down, so I can't really move it. I have a little. laptop. I have an iPad. I can roam. Stick one of them out the I window. Do, do it. Yeah, okay. okay. We'll Give just keep chatting and, and you I'm can do not, sunrise. Sunrise is not here yet, so. Our roving reporter. Uh, won't be long. Mm. Okay. Oh, my. Well, sunrise here that. in the metropolitan Detroit area was three minutes ago. Three minutes ago? <laughs> Technically. Detroit. Technically. Okay. I got 622, what it's telling me. 622 a.m. And it's only five. I really enjoyed an looking at. An hour and a half. I was looking at the times for astronomical twilight, uh, yeah. looking at uh, one of my other uh, observatory projects. And the end of astronomical, twi astronomical twilight, when you get the last glow of the sunset on the horizon finally disappearing, was just a minute or two before midnight. And then the first hint of dawn was at 3.27 a.m. Wow. So a whole three and a half hours of darkness. <laughs> no, no, it's a little further north than we are here. so I, I guess, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm checking the email. Make sure we have the segment after this one set up. Uh, uh, oh yes, Pup puppets. Death by puppets. Death by puppets. Uh, My only issue. And Rebecca. Is sunrise in Houston is that Houston is super flat. There's no like plateau hill I can go hang out on and get a decent. View. There's going to be houses in the way. There's a, there's building more and more suburbs to this humongous city already driving well, here is when I'm, when I'm visiting over at the Johnson Space Flight Center that uh, the top of the freeway bridges are actually pretty good. Oh, <laughs> that's a, so you want me to just keep driving by? That'll, that'll no, be awesome. Over, you put on your <laughs> flashers. And, well, what kind of bandwidth oh, yeah. can you expect on a, on a cell phone or on a uh, cell I mean, iPad? I have an iPhone 5. I can do that. Mobile. You can do them live. Can it, I do it, a hangout? I haven't oh done God. one of those in a while, um, but yeah, I can. I've done it. I've done it on my iPad. I know that works. The sun is know. rising in Florida. Yeah. Um, yep. It should be coming up any time now around here. I've been up at 5 a.m. pretty often lately. <laughs> You've been up yeah. at 5 a.m. pretty often from here? Exactly 6 a.m. here in Virginia. It's 5 and here, too. But yeah, right. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing that we're... You know, it's that much different for us. We're, it doesn't seem like we're that far away, east west, more north south. Yeah. Well, not only to the west, but you're further south. Well, I guess that does make a difference. I won't yeah. in that direction. Okay. Thank you for the correction. There's mm -hmm. a noticeable difference even even on just on different sides of the state of Michigan. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm from northern Michigan. I'm right now in southeastern Michigan, so looking at the differences there. I, I was just looking ahead, uh, thinking ahead. By the way, this we're 18 hours into this. Oh, my gosh. Nicole. <laughs> we're almost halfway done. Woo. Almost halfway. <laughs> I think another four or five days we'll get the hang of this. <laughs> I might die. There's not enough caffeine in the world for that. I was looking at the events coming up. We've got uh, Astrophotography 2 is coming up next hour. Death by Puppets is an hour from now, and I've wanted to meet those folks. I was telling Richard in, in the green room that uh, um, I, I, they, they have an interesting program, a, a takeoff on Carl Sagan that I wanted to, I would love to broadcast on astronomy.fm if they will uh, let me do that. So, Well, it's a look. lot of visual. Can you do that? 
oh, the, the audio is was good in there. It was good enough. I do a lot of things. Well, you know, like <laughs> this Hangout um, that we rededicate on astronomy.fm. Uh, we have uh, at uh, 7 o'clock uh, Central Time today is the CosmoQuest Community Hour. I don't know any of these people, so I'm looking forward to learning oh, about yeah, that. So, no, oh, yeah, so... Ulysses I, 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 Scott Adkins. Uh, no, Ulysses Adkins. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, right, his middle name. Uh, yeah, I pulled in, uh, but we have, uh, so, you know, we have these weekly hangouts, and so there are uh, some some of our viewers that are there every week with us commenting, hanging out. Uh, Ulysses actually know from Virginia as well. Uh, so it's kind of the, the community fan hour. This is uh, people who haven't, you know, are involved in CosmoQuest, heard about us, watch the shows, and I wanted to actually invite them into the Hangout uh, and, and say hello. How many of those do you usually get? And they have a really tough job because they are right before, I think, the best class of the day, the best session of the day, teaching ah, surface science with Oreo Darlene. cookies. I'm looking forward to the Oreo cookies. That'll Oreo be cookies. Oh, well, Darlene Cavalier is on the Oh, Darlene Cavalier is going to make an appearance as well. She's the science uh, cheerleader. Yeah, and uh, the SciStarter, which is uh, the, the citizen science clearinghouse, uh, where you can find out all kinds of citizen science projects with, from all different branches of science, even some that are, are not science. I think some of the, the archival type projects are there as well. Uh, anything from uh, a, you know a little bit of effort to a whole lot of effort, uh, any kind of citizen science project that you want. So we'll be talking to her about that. And then, yes, uh, Pamela's been wanting to do this uh, topography and ge with Oreo cookie demo for a while. So uh, we will we will we will feast on Oreo cookies for breakfast. Back for to the demo. kitchen. Back to the kitchen for science. <laughs> <laughs> Vesta oh, Mappers is coming up at ten o'clock central, and after that, one of my favorite people in the known universe, uh, spaceflight history with Amy Shira Title, who. Last I saw on Friday's Hangout, didn't have a tube up her nose. That's right. <laughs> and we, we, did we did pick on her a little bit. She, but, uh, no, she was uh, moving across the, across the country, actually from Canada to the U.S., but moving, you know, all the way west to east and uh, ended up in the hospital, unfortunately. It was... Uh, um, yeah, what an she adventure. She has huh? a lot of scar tissue, internal scar tissue from an accident from way back. Um, and so she wasn't doing so well, ended up in the hospital. She... Uh, uh, tweeted in Google Plus a picture of herself in the hospital with a tube in her nose boy, and everything. And boy, did she look miserable. I mean, yeah. really, truly. Like she wanted to slug whoever's taking the picture. Is that her husband? Uh, she, I think it may have been a selfie. I think she may have wanted to punch herself. I, 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 oh, I get the, I, looking at that picture, I just assumed that you know, if the hose was on this tube and then my nose was a little longer, I would kill you. <laughs> I would strangle you with it if I could reach you. But no, I'll just sit here. Um, we have, uh, t t talking about cranks, um, climate change, <laughs> teaching facts-based science. That's with the Astronomy Cast crew. Um, Matt Kaplan will be joining us uh, just after lunch today with battle combating misinformation with the media. And that's just the next six hours, and there's a whole bunch of neat stuff after that as well. So yep. if anybody would like to enjoy that, well, they need to give. We need, yes. need your help. Are you uh, laughing at Richard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's taking a selfie in front of the computer. Of that, of that wonderful shirt, that manly chest. Oh, dear. <laughs> Pavel has returned.